you're getting a nice close-up right now, and Gotham. They are both male ferrets that are part of our ambassador animal program, and we're going to let them down for some playtime. So we're going to go ahead and see what they choose to interact with today. Um, I believe tomorrow is National Ferret Day, which is why we are celebrating here at Franklin Park Zoo with our lovely two ferrets. You might be wondering, you visit the zoo many times, and you might not have seen our ferrets and where they are located at the zoo. These guys, like I said, are a part of our ambassador animal program and live behind the scenes and come out for special educational programs. So you guys are very lucky to be able to see these guys who are not usually visible here at the zoo. So, like you said, we have lots of fun enrichment here for them today. Um, enrichment themselves, though, is being right here in our meeting barn. They don't usually come in here very often, so there's lots of different smells and things to see and explore, but we also do have their familiar toys as well here, so we're hoping they're going to get kind of excited to go into their fall pit, hopefully interact with each other. These guys are not related to each other, they are not brothers, but they have lived together since they were very, very young. They interact with each other constantly um, throughout the day. Domestic ferrets are very, very social animals, so having at least two together is super critical for their welfare and having a social engagement with them. So I'm gonna focus a little bit more on domesticated ferrets, which are these guys, and then I'm gonna go more into the endangered species of black-footed ferrets. So some differences, like I said, these are domesticated ferrets. So these guys are not found in the wild. Um, these guys are a little bit different. They look a lot different. Their coats and their fur looks different as well. Um, their diet is a lot different. Here at the zoo, we feed them a um, dry food that's made just for ferrets. Um, that is super critical for them. It's basically like an all-encompassing diet that gives them all the protein. Ferrets are considered carnivores, so they don't eat any types of veggies or leafy greens. Um, wild ferrets, like we'll talk about, sometimes will actually eat eggs and things like that, so that's a little bit different. Um, <laughs> But these guys can get novel foods or food treats, like they can get pinkies, they can eat chips, fish. Um, these guys actually don't seem to like that type of food, which is interesting, but we still like to offer it to them as something that they can smell that's a little bit different, um, as well as interact with too. So like I said, I mentioned we have um, an endangered species black-footed ferret. We don't have this species here at the zoo, Gotham and Joker are ambassadors for domesticated ferrets as well as for the endangered species of ferrets that we, they are related to. So we're going to go a little bit into that um, as well. So like I said, black-winged ferrets are um, usually native to more of the Great American Plains. That's where you typically find them. And probably about in the 70s, these guys, um, black-winged ferrets, became basically extinct. Um, for two big reasons. One of them was habitat loss, and two was their main diet, which were prairie dogs, where uh, populations were severely declining due to uh, rodent control or pest control. So prairie dogs were, you know, really a nuisance, or they call it nuisance to people, so people were poisoning them, and their population numbers were really declining and that's exactly what black-footed ferrets eat um, all the time. So that really declined their population to the point where they were basically non-existent. But with the help of a lot of conservation programs, especially zoos, um, they were able to actually capture some of the last of uh, uh, black-footed ferrets in the wild, put them into a breeding, a breeding program at different zoos or organizations and actually bring up their population and re-release them into their natural environment, which is so amazing that that was a project that was able to get done and that still happens to this day. It's something super important 
and definitely being able to take away a lot of that pest control specifically with prairie dogs so that way they can still be able to find that prey. Um, just like domesticated ferrets, black-footed ferrets even more so are great hunters. Prairie dogs are pretty big compared to a ferret, definitely, and these guys um, who are black-footed ferrets can actually eat one full prairie dog that can last them about three to four days of their diet. <laughs> you can see these guys are really good at getting around their environment. That is actually a characteristic of these guys. These guys are predators, so they really need to be able to navigate their environment, be able to fit into small crevices, walk and run really fast, be able to climb and dig so they can find their prey or like black-footed ferrets would find their prairie dogs. So one ferret can actually consume about 100 prairie dogs in one year. So you can only imagine how many prairie dogs need to be in an environment for black-footed ferrets to survive. So that's why it is so important when you, you consider using pest control, not just for prairie dogs, for a lot of different animals, if that's the most suitable choice for the environment around them. Are there, there are other animals that would actually benefit from that species being around, or is it just a nuisance to you? Thinking about the environment you live in in general versus what's you know convenient for you as well. Those are really great mindsets to keep in mind when you're making decisions about pest control for sure. You might have seen, we actually do have prairie dogs here at the zoo. Um, they're actually off exhibit right now, but they usually are found in our children's zoo area. So you can definitely see them up close at the zoo in normal times and get to learn about those animals as well. Now, do we have any questions coming in, Nora? So we do have a couple questions about these two. Mm -hmm. So one question is, is one of them more dominant than the other? And another question is, do they like to snuggle with each other? So, snuggling, absolutely yes. That is something they are constantly doing. Ferrets actually sleep most of the day. They are sleeping more than they are awake. And as a predator animal, um, they need to be able to save up enough energy so that way they can hunt. So that's why sleep is so important for them. So they do snuggle, they are social animals. Um, I'm sure right after this playtime, they will be back snuggling. Um, um, is one of them more dominant than the other more one? More dominant than the other. So I would say that they actually are they definitely have different personalities, for sure. I wouldn't say that one is specifically more dominant than the other, but Joker, I would say, is a little bit more mischievous <laughs> than Gotham in the sense where he's kind of always looking to get out where he is and find something a little bit more exciting than what he's actually doing. Um, Joker is also a little bit smaller than Gotham, so he's able to sneak around a lot more than Gotham can. Awesome. And we also got another question. Um, do they have a favorite type of enrichment? Favorite type of enrichment? Hmm. So for these guys, we give them several types of enrichment. We have, this is what we would consider physical enrichment, where it's just a bunch of different types of toys and things that can jump in. They have scents, so we'll give them different spices to the smell. We give them food enrichment, which they actually don't really interact with. And then we have social enrichment and physical exercise. I would say their favorite type of enrichment is if we can actually get them large areas to explore. Bring them to new areas is definitely probably the most, their favorite enrichment versus items per se. Awesome, and I've seen a couple of comments come through that people have ferrets at home. And a lot of them are saying that they also have pairs of ferrets, which you mentioned is really important for a very social animal. Yes, definitely. Having two ferrets is definitely the minimum of what it should be, but we could definitely have more ferrets if you have the amount of space for them. Yep, they do, these guys can be pets. We do warn that they are a lot of work. They require exercise time every single day, so you can't just leave them in their enclosures all day. They definitely need time to explore. These guys also have a really, really potent smell to them. So if that's something you feel like you're being sensitive to, you want to think about that as well. 
I personally don't ever smell it anymore because I'm around them every day, but if you think about it in your house, that might not be something you would want to smell too much. Yeah, my jacket smells like ferret and it is not the most pleasant. So we did get a question about why they aren't allowed as pets in some states. Does it have to do with those things? You know, I think as far as I know, the only states where it's illegal to have ferrets is California and Hawaii. Um, I do not think that those states count them. I could be wrong, but I don't think they count them as domestic species. And that is why they are not considered um, legal for pet purposes. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it's Hawaii and California that are the only ones. And I believe maybe like within the last like 10 years, um, like England has made them um, legal as pets as well. That would be a really cool thing to look into if you guys have any more questions about it. Um, we did get a question. Uh, how much do they weigh? So, Amy, you weighed them today. Do you remember? <laughs> I do not actually remember. Oh, man. Exactly how much. These guys are pretty light. Um, as you can kind of tell, uh, Amanda did mention earlier that Joker was a bit thinner. You can see Gotham's a lot bigger. Um, so I think... Joker is around like just over a thousand grams and Gotham's about 1,300 grams. So there is a little bit of a difference. And we do weigh them monthly. Um, being able to monitor their weight definitely helps with taking care of them and knowing if they're healthy or not. Um, a sign of weight loss is a really good indicator that, that there might be something wrong health wise. Sometimes animals um, won't show those behaviors that they don't feel well. So we haven't had too many other questions come through, um, but we have seen these guys uh, escape a couple of times. Can you tell us a little bit about how they can escape so easily and why that might be a good adaptation for them? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, these guys are <laughs> predators and they would need to be able to get into really small places um, to be able to find their prey or even be able to make dens so they would be they're really, really good diggers and sliding into really, really small spots. So they're gonna try to exhibit those same behaviors here and be able to kind of slither in the face. So we like to give them enrichment that kind of causes that. So I think in those tunnels, you can see we have little tubes that they can go through. So that way they can exhibit those natural behaviors of being able to slide into things. You can actually see too, I'm sure, up in a little pot a little closer, they do have nails. They are really, really great diggers. When we bring them outside for playtime, we'll put them on um, a lead just so we can be able to monitor them and give them that, that freedom still. They'll dig all into the dirt and the mulch, and that's one of their most favorite things to do is dig. Awesome. And I don't know if you know this off the top of your head, but we have gotten a few questions about what brand of ferret chow they get. It's a Missouri brand. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so most of the dry food that um, zoos use is a Missouri brand food. Um, most of our animals at the zoo, if they get dry food, that's the brand of it. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. So we also got some questions about why they are two different colors. So we are noticing that Joker is a lot lighter than Gotham is. Yeah, so like I said, these are domesticated ferrets. These guys are bred to kind of look a certain way sometimes. So there's different ways, just like if you had um, a certain breed of a dog, you can, they can still come in different colors. Um, so that's just why they look a little bit different. Domesticated ferrets can look quite different. Like we have Gotham who has the big, the stripes that big striper on his face versus Joker doesn't really have that. There's also, you can get domesticated albino ferrets too. Those are um, kind of a, a 
special breed, and they'll actually have red eyes, which is very interesting. So even though Joker looks pretty light, he's not considered a true albino by any means. He just have a little bit of the darker <laughs> color in his tail. Yeah. Yeah, these guys are super engaging. They make fantastic and master animals because they're very easy to handle. They're very charismatic. Um, they are great house together. Um, these guys get the best care that they can at the zoo, but it's not too much work on our end to give them that care. And the most thing that we like to make sure to give them is exercise time every single day so they can get their energy out. That is so important for their well-being and being able to provide enrichment every day. These guys get new enrichment every single day, so they are exposed to something new in their environment daily. It looks like Gotham's having a fun time chewing yes. on this ball. He seems to really enjoy that ball. There are some toys that we want to be careful with because we don't want them to consume tiny pieces of. So sometimes we'll do um, supervised enrichment is what we consider now where we're here watching and monitoring them. So if we see them getting into a little bit of trouble, we can kind of deal with that <laughs> right here. They also really seem to like the latex on their gloves. So that seems to be a really fun thing for him too. So is there a reason why you guys are wearing those gloves with our ferrets? That's a great question. So ferrets are actually, they could be prone to getting um, COVID-19. So that would be something that could happen. It's, it's unlikely, but just so we're extra careful and precautious, we wear masks and we wear gloves around them. And we do not bring them around <laughs> large groups of people. So being in this room, there's only three other people and we're not super on top of them. Um, and that's really just for their safety. Um, there are a few <laughs> other animals at the zoo who are prone to getting COVID. Um, and we have precautions in place for them as well. But like I said, it's just us being extra careful. Um, so most likely will not be something we would have to encounter, especially with everyone getting their vaccine. Awesome. Well, it doesn't look like we have too many more questions. Just a lot of ferret fans. Awesome. So we can Thank say goodbye to so our friends. Thank you for joining us for our ferret playtime. They seem to really enjoy that. So this was just as fun for them as it probably was for you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another Zoo to You.